Hey everyone, first off I wanted to thank you for checking out my article in 3D World. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video to show you one of the box out tips that I included in the article, uh, focusing on creating details through uh, BPR and uh, generating meshes from uh, geometry to BPR within ZBrush. Um, namely I'll be focusing on just the uh, the chest piece here that you can see on my character. It's a bit of a the uh, the scale mail that he has covering his chest and back. Um, if you look at the ZTL that I've provided as well, you'll be able to um, just navigate around the model yourself and uh, and check that out. Um, so first off, I uh, I created a, a base mesh model here, which is uh, is pretty basic, just a single plane for the front and the back, nothing too complicated for the uh, for the edge flow, and from that I ended up creating this asset, which would be about the same dimensions, just um, just created in in different planes. So uh, each one's a a panel here. I just did that in uh, in Max using using edge extrusion modeling. Um, now the reason why I'm doing this is that when you use BPR models, they will be drawn based on each square that you have. So you know trying to keep it even and also keeping uh, each plane overlapping one another so that so there isn't like um, there isn't like too much. Uh, um, penetration. There isn't like uh, uh, just a flat surface. So uh, with these like planes, the the scales will end up overlapping each other in a way that's more natural. So they'd have a uh, nice overlapping details, cast nice shadows, and it really gives some depth to my to my model. So once this was created, I then went and made um, my own custom my own custom mesh here. It would be. Uh, just some Viking style scales are just modeled in Max. Um, they're already already overlapping each other like this, and uh, you can tell that just based on a like a square that they would kind of be overlapping a little. But that's to help with the the tiling mesh. Um, once I imported this model, you can just create a uh, an insert mesh here, um, and you can either append it to a, a pre-existing insert mesh brush. Or create a completely new one. Uh, I just ended up creating a completely new one. So then, I ended up creating this arrow, which is uh, probably not the the smoothest arrow in the world. But created it using uh, shadow shadow box, uh, just a really simple primitive. And what this will do will help me judge what direction um, the faces on my my base mesh are uh, are pointing towards. So you can see here. If you activate micro mesh and you select that arrow and then turn on wireframe, you can see the arrow is pointing in the right direction. So the reason for doing this and why that's um, why that's important is that you'll want all the scales to be facing the same way. So if one of these arrows were facing left or right, that means that the arrow that the the scales will end up being drawn uh, vertically and then you know horizontally, and it just won't tile properly. So to fix that, you can go to Geometry, and you can do Spin Edge, and you can see that changing there. So this is the direction that I would want. Okay. Now, once all of your faces are pointing the correct correct direction, just hit Micro Mesh, and you can select your scales. You can kind of see that they're outlined here now. And if you want to preview it, go to your render settings, and you can enable um, draw micro mesh. So without that, they won't show up in in your BPR render. Click BPR. Just wait for that render to come out. There you go. You can see uh, that the the tiling meshes that would be drawn are now uh, are now showing up in my render. And if you click off the the sculpt, they go away. So in order to get that into an actual model, you just go to Geometry and then click Convert BPR to Geo, and that'll create a new model based on the tiling um, the tiling meshes that you created with your insert mesh brush, and you can see it's completely completely workable. You can select each of these and manipulate them as as you'd like. Um, 
And then to take mine further in my, my King of the North character, um, I just ended up adding um, some trim, stitches, damage, um, stuff like that. Just things to give it give it life. But this would be the uh, the essential step to to creating scale mount armor. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and thanks for watching.